Hey guys, so I just watched the soy boy diet aftermath. Soy boy is just it's just the dumbest thing. I just watched that video from H Bomber Guy, I believe is his name. I'm realizing I don't know if I've ever said that out loud before. So for those who don't know, I guess go back to Paul Joseph Watson. He did a video on soy boys, on people, men who eat soy and what it does to them. Is soy food consumption turning men into pussies and making them more likely to adopt left-wing beliefs? The stupid anti-soy stuff that I've talked about in the past that's usually coming from, it's more from a health stance, not so much a conservative stance. By that I mean it's mostly people saying soy is bad, it does this and this and this, increases the risk for cancer. All the stuff that is not true that I've talked about in numerous videos on this channel, including recently in a response to Rebel Media, another conservative outlet that has kind of jumped on this soy thing because it's a good scapegoat, I guess, for a, a problem that they think exists that they don't I mean, they don't really have any evidence for. The problem being that men are no longer masculine and powerful and domineering. I mean, I don't even know the phrases that they use. It's like, oh, okay. And like now they're all sensitive and compassionate. And apparently that's that's a bad thing. Whatever, I don't wanna get into that. It's, it's dumb. Actually, I will get into that later now that I think about it. But the point is, uh, H. Bomber Guy did a response to Paul Joseph Watson just recently. And before that, he did like a mini response that was pretty funny and pointed out that the supplements that uh, Paul has promoted as part of Infowars actually contain soy. A lot of these pseudoscience people do this, like Food Babe has done this numerous times. I think, what's his name? Mark Hyman has done it numerous times, has said that something is dangerous and you shouldn't use it. And then it's actually in a product that they sell because of course that's a thing. But anyway, he did this kind of mini response and said that he was going to go on a soy diet for two months and eat not like only soy but a lot of soy. Basically the only soy product I won't be consuming is Brain Force Plus because holy shit have you seen the reviews it's fucking terrible. Then like I said he did a more in-depth kind of response to Paul's video and just this notion of soy boys and the claims against soy that Paul cites with like no evidence because of course and then he did he just did this follow-up video talking about his soy boy diet experience. I can't say that anymore. It's making me insane. So like I said, he ate soy for two months. Not only soy, but he replaced, I believe he said, meat and milk and eggs. So basically a vegan diet with a focus on soy for protein. So instead of cow's milk, he had soy milk, soy mock meat products. And he ended up losing weight in those two months, which is not surprising. Like he said, it forced him to think about what he's eating more, right? Instead of just eating whatever. And I think also soy is lower in calories than meat is, like nine times out of 10. I'm sure there's one example of some really lean, lean, lean meat that like people don't eat that's maybe lower in calories. So yeah, not surprising that he lost weight in that time. Um, he also talked about kind of the flavor of tofu and how people say that it's flavorless and it is, but I guess his point was kind of, you can say the same thing about meat. And I've heard a lot of vegans say the same thing, that like meat is pretty much flavorless. And I don't think that's true. Meat does have a flavor. I think tofu has a flavor too, though. It has like a very clear flavor to me, but they're not good flavors. I'm sure there are some people who are gonna say, whatever, I will eat tofu on its own with nothing on it delicious, or I will eat, you know, pork with nothing on it. Oh God, I don't know. I'm sure there are those people, but for most of us, we want our foods flavored. I don't know, is there any food other than fruit that we would eat without sugar or like salt and pepper and spices on it? I, I don't think I can think of anything that you can just eat like fresh without stuff on it, right? Other than fruit. Point is, he was just saying it's, I think that it's not a very good argument to say that tofu is flavorless and that's why, you know, I'm not gonna eat tofu or something because you flavor it with stuff and it's yummy. It's the same with meat. I remember watching a show, I think it was the MTV True Life. Is that still a thing? I loved that show growing up. Oh my God, I was like the perfect age for it. Like, I don't know, pre-teen, teenager, somewhere around there. I would watch it all the time. They had so many episodes. And I remember one, I think it was just people trying to get healthy, trying to lose weight, something like that. And this, they gave, or, or all the people, I guess, had like a, a personal trainer or a nutritionist. And this woman was given for a meal steamed broccoli or something, steamed vegetables with like nothing on it and a chicken breast with no skin that was just steamed again with nothing on it. And she could not eat it. She's like, this is disgusting. It just reminded me of that. Like most people aren't just gonna eat 
chicken with nothing on it, right? We want chicken with the skin and the skin has stuff on it, a glaze or a rub or something on it to make it delicious. It's the same with tofu. He also talked about liking uh, some of the things that he tried. Again, like it's not so much the taste of the tofu, it's the stuff that you put on it. So he talked about um, the, the veggie burgers, the soy burgers and stuff and how it has all the herbs and spices. And like, that's what makes it taste good. Um, he said he really liked soy milk. He really liked the flavor. He only uses milk like in his coffee because milk's weird. And I 100% agree with that. Uh, I was never a big milk drinker. It always had the worst aftertaste. Oh, it's just nasty. Uh, but yeah, he, he does use that in this coffee and he really likes it. Uh, I guess prefers it over milk. So I guess he's going to keep using the soy milk in his coffee. That's really cool. And then he said his body didn't change at all. He didn't grow boobs. I guess his point was that it was uneventful as you would expect it to be. I also didn't get significantly fitter or have that much more energy than I normally had either. So it turns out that soybeans are magical. Basically I proved exactly what everyone expected this would prove in the most boring and straightforward way possible. It turns out that soybeans are just a kind of bean that you can eat. I think I have a video called eat soy or don't eat soy. It doesn't matter. And I guess the other thing I'll say is I think this shows how, how easy it can be moving to a vegan diet. If you just focus on, I mean, he made it so simple. I know he wasn't trying to eat vegan. The focus was soy, but by focusing on soy, he really made it super simple. And I'm not saying that everyone should just eat soy at every meal or anything like that. You want to have, you know, at least somewhat of a varied diet, right? But that's an easy way to do it, to just focus on you know, I'm going to replace meat, dairy, and eggs, or maybe just meat or just dairy or just eggs, whatever, with a vegan version of that. And then just leave it at that. So if one of your favorite meals is spaghetti and meatballs, well, what's the non-vegan food in that? It would be the meatballs, obviously, right? Unless you're putting like milk in your marinara, which is a thing that stores do. The Kroger marinara sauce has milk in it. Why? It's not a cream sauce. Point is, you would just replace the meatballs with some vegan meatball. I guess my point is, I think people, when they think of going vegan, they think of everything they eat being entirely different. They're having all new foods and it doesn't have to be that way. Of course, you can do it that way if you want, but you don't have to. You can make it actually really simple. And like I've said before numerous times on this channel, you can transition, right? Like you don't have to <laughs> cut out all your meat and dairy and eggs all at one time, obviously. And the last thing I'll talk about is soy vegan masculinity issue. I actually mentioned this on Twitter. If I had been caffeinated, I might have uh, worded it a little bit nicer. I was fairly aggressive. I wish I could reward that. I do think it's funny that people like Paul are obviously so worried about not being masculine. And the fact that they're so worried kind of shows that maybe they're not so masculine. <laughs> Just inherently makes them not very confident and kind of pathetic. I also find it funny that it's, it's always people like Paul who and maybe this seems unfair, but I feel like when you're talking about this issue, it opens you up to certain criticism. So in this case, the way he looks, like he's, I'm not saying he's ugly or anything like that, but he is not someone who I would define as super manly. <laughs> like he's not built or anything. His face is not super cut. He just doesn't have that look. He has a softer, more feminine look. And he's got the super red lips, right? Which immediately is, it's very feminine. Like, is this compensating for something? Does he not feel comfortable enough in his own skin? If that's true, you know, I feel sorry for him. I know he's a pretty toxic individual. He promotes a lot of garbage, a lot of misinformation, a lot of hate. And maybe it's just stemming from this lack of confidence that he has in himself because of maybe the way he looks, because he is smaller. That's very sad, but it's also, I mean, it's also kind of funny because again, he's bringing attention to this nonsense issue and talking about masculinity and people on the left when he, to me, would be like poster boy, poster soy boy. <laughs> he's no golden one, let's be real. I think if people like him would put it like, look, you won't eat a bean. <laughs> That's what soy is, it's a bean. You won't eat a bean because you're worried that, what, you won't be seen as manly? 
by women, by men, by other men. I mean, I don't even know what exactly the concern is. Or you think it's going to turn you into a a left tart? What do they even call it? Liberal cuck? I can't imagine being that person. Like, I won't eat a food <laughs> because I'm worried how other people will perceive me if I eat this food. I think someone who says, no, I don't care. Number one, I'm not so ridiculous that I'm going to look for evidence that supports a preconceived notion that I have. I'm actually going to look at the evidence and see like, if is soy actually a problem? Oh no, it's not. Okay, cool. Oh, it's actually like a fairly healthy food. And okay, cool. Yeah, I'll eat soy. Who cares? Like that is infinitely more attractive to me than someone who's like, no, I'm afraid of eating soy because I don't want to grow boobs. I don't know who talks like that. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment some questions down below, subscribe, support the channel, and I will have a new video very soon. And by the way, I saw your comments criticizing my makeup. It was one or two videos where I had this lip color and I had like a dark eyeshadow. And it's so confusing because I saw at least, I don't know, like a couple comments or something where someone was like, girl, no. <laughs> Like, you do not combine a dark eyeshadow with a bold lip and oh my god, bitch, learn how to blend. Like, I saw a couple of those, but then I also saw ones that were like, oh my god, I love your makeup, it looks awesome. <laughs> like, what do I do with this information?